Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Monday, March the 21st, 2022. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here to jumpstart our week with a fantastic NBA nine-game main slate that starts at 7 p.m. on all three DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. So we are going to go over those games, get you ready to build those lineups and get in the correct contests and start your week off uh, with a big win. A couple of things real quick. It was a really terrific weekend here at Coach Talk. Had a top 1% PGA lineup that brought a lot of our members, some major winners there. Had some, some good DFS NBA lines throughout the weekend. We had uh, our folks uh, hitting all kinds of prize picks plays were on some kind of crazy heater there, something like 16 and three or something right in that neighborhood. Um, just really uh, got that rolling. Uh, we we launched a new relationship with, or partnership too, with um, a great group, Fortune Four. We're combining, doing some collaboration work with our prize pick uh, plays. You can catch those on Twitter every day. Uh, we're at DFS Coach Talk. You can uh, see those. Those are in front of the paywall. And then we're putting together additional prize picks plays uh, for our, our members, obviously. If you'd like to become a member, go to DFSCoachTalk.com. You can jump in for as little as a three-day $10 pass if you like. We also have a great MLB uh, offer where uh, it goes from April 7th which is the start of the season, all the way through October 2nd. And from now until the start of the MLB season, on the 7th, you get Coach Talk for free. So check that offer out on our website as well. All right. Uh, last thing I want to do, quick thanks to our team. I'll tell you what, our Coach Talk team is absolutely phenomenal right now. We've got, uh, we had a, if you missed the pod yesterday, it was the premier pod from Deb Lutz, who is on our Coach Talk team, and she was terrific. So we, we, we're really excited about having her part of our podcast and provider team. She'll be on every Tuesday and Sunday with me, so you'll catch, you can catch her uh, tomorrow with me. Um, also, Colin Chatch, man, he has been after it for us all over the place on social media, Twitter, uh, just really taken off, a lot of super busy, as you can see with my tired eyes, but it's awesome. It's great to have tired eyes, and Colin's a big part of that. And then also uh, our man, Josh Crash Davis, he has been burning the candle at both ends, getting these podcasts up and, and uh, all of our thumbnails, all kinds of uh, tough work in the background. And then last but not least, uh, Brett Trimble, the, the brains behind our entire uh, Coach Talk team here, getting all of the stuff working, getting all our Discord, and you name it, he's got it going. So just had to take a few seconds there to thank the squad. Uh, great, great group of people. And uh, man, we're just, we are building every day and really appreciative of all of you for listening in sending us questions, joining uh, our, our um, Discord. So great stuff. All right, feel, that was the feel good four minutes. Now it's an all business, nine games, no messing around. We're going after it. Game one, Portland Trailblazers at the Detroit Pistons. Detroit uh, is favored by seven, which is quite a bit for Detroit to be favored against anybody. <clears throat> it's a 222 and a half total, 107.75 implied for Portland, 114.75 for the Detroit Pistons. Coming into the game, Portland's 26 and 44, Detroit 19 and 52. Winslow right now is listed as questionable for Portland, an important piece of uh, their starting rotation. And then we know that uh, we've got two doubtfuls, uh, Bledsoe and Simons. I'm counting them out, but keep an eye out. They'll be back this week, it looks like. Uh, we know Lillard, Luzada, and Nurkic are already out. For Detroit, Corey Joseph is probable, and Killian Hayes is probable. So we could have that splitted point guard again. 
The one that's questionable today is Kelly Olenek. Uh, the guys that are out are Diallo, Grant, Jackson, and Smith. So rough game to start the slate here as far as uh, teams and their ability to win. But it's not a bad game for DFS purposes. We've got uh, Portland on the second night of a back-to-back. And uh, that could affect things a little bit. Um, and, you know, pricing's fair on these two teams. You've got uh, 6'6", Brandon Williams, who's played well. Josh Hart at 8K has had some massive games of late. And then a lot of people have been going to Watford, but he's 6'7 now. A little bit too rich for my blood. Drew Eubanks at 5'8". He's also playable in certain scenarios. If Winslow doesn't go, it probably brings C.J. Elby back into that starting lineup at 4-2, which is pretty uh, fair price as well. Uh, for the Detroit Pistons, more so, you know, you're looking at that split again with Joseph and Hayes. Cunningham uh, ready to roll at 8-4. Could be a nice play if you want to pay up. Sadiq Bey has had some ceiling games at 7-1. And uh, Marvin Bagley. 5-9, ah, you know, Kelly O at 4-2, but questionable. So we need to see uh, how this, you know, if Kelly O is going to be in there, it makes Bagley a little more playable. Isaiah Livers is now in the mix. Not quite recommended, but he is 3-2, somebody to keep an eye on. All right, we go to game two. It's the LA Lakers, Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland is favored by 6.5. It's a 224.5 total. 109 implied for the Lakers, 115.5 for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, in this game, LeBron James questionable, no, no doubt, uh, but we believe that he will play. It's an island game, so I've counted him in. Wendy and Gabriel and THT both probable. Uh, Wayne Ellington questionable. We know Davis and Nunn are out. For Cleveland, the big fella, Jared Allen, Rondo, and Dean Wade all out all rotational players. Uh, all right. As we look at this game again, Island game for both teams expect uh, certainly LeBron at Cleveland, his hometown hard not to take him. You got all the narratives there. 11, six playing in Cleveland, all this chitter chatter about wouldn't it be great if LeBron, LeBron was back in Cleveland with that team, they'd be a championship team. You know, everybody hears all that stuff. LeBron certainly likes to show out in his hometown. So he's he's going to be pretty highly owned, but he deserves to be. Even though Cleveland's defense is really tough, uh, it's something to consider here is, you know, does he really have a true ceiling game in him for this event? So we'll see. I think he does. I think he's going to be one of my pay-up options. I just don't want to have him go ballistic at home in Cleveland and then have to catch those points throughout the rest of the slate. On the other side, you got Darius Garland, who at 9-3 is expensive, but he's worth it. I mean, he's been fantastic. He's been carrying the show there, and I'm sure playing against uh, LeBron, he wants to tune it up uh, to the top of his game. Um, after that, though, you know, Laurie Markkinen's had some fantastic games, but really hasn't been priced up yet. He's only 6K, and I think, you know, that's probably too cheap for the way he's been playing. Uh, Mobley also at 7-9, you know, with LeBron starting and probably playing a lot of the game at center, Mobley should really get in there for a lot of rebounds, a lot of interior stuff. So I like this game. I think that uh, LeBron, Garland, Mobley, I know it's huge money right off the bat, but I'm not saying to play all three of them, but – I, I really do uh, like them. I think that they're going to be part of a lot of optimal lineups. All right, quick coffee sip. All right, we go on to game three. <clears throat> it's also a seven o'clock game. It's the New Orleans Pelicans and Charlotte Hornets. Charlotte's favored by seven. It's a 234 and a half total. 113.75 for the Pels. 120 for the Charlotte Hornets. It is the second night of a back-to-back -back for the Pelicans. And, you know, that they were in a contested game yesterday. 
So we'll see if that's going to have any effect uh, on them. Devontae Graham still questionable. Brandon Ingram is questionable. That is enormous. So we need that Ingram news. We should get it because it's one of those first three seven o'clock games. And that will affect, you know, the whole McCullum play, Ingram play, and how that game's going to flow. This game, though, good pace, poor defense. Um, so got to zone in on this one. Nance and Williamson out for Charlotte. Uh, Gordon Hayward's the only one uh, that remains out. So lots of, you know, great plays here. A lot of it has to do on the Pelican side if Ingram sits or not. Certainly uh, McCollum's been in a zone. He's in that, you know, Garland range. He's 9-2. So <clears throat> there's going to be some decisions that have to be made there. If Ingram plays, it definitely brings McCollum back a notch. But Charlotte plays super fast and they don't play good defense. So um, I'm, you know, definitely considering McCollum, not sure if Ingram will have a cap of minutes if he's back. I'm thinking he may not play, so I'm focused on McCollum again. And uh, Jackson Hayes at 5'4", his price stays low. He keeps getting to his number. And then centers against Charlotte have done well. Joe Val, if you want to pay up at 8'3", <clears throat> is definitely an option. Um, Devontae Graham, <clears throat> excuse me, if uh, if he's back, it certainly will take a bite out of Jose Alvarado, but boy, he's coming off a nice game yesterday and is 4-6. So let's see what that news is on Graham and how all that's going to play out. But certainly exposure to the Pell side and likewise for the Hornets. You've got uh, Miles Bridges at 8K, which I think is fair for his output. P.J. Washington smashed it for us the other day uh, at 5-2 as a starter. He's worth considering. And then you've got both backcourt, LaMelo Ball and Terry Rozier. <clears throat> Ball's 8-8, eight, eight, Rozier's 8-2. One or the other, though, I wouldn't play both, but certainly uh, worth ratcheting up one of those two guys. Um, bench wise, not really interested on the Hornet side, but definite exposure here. Probably step out of this game with three players. I do think it's a key game on the slate. All right, we, we shift to the first 730 game. It's the Miami Heat and Philadelphia 76ers. Miami's favored by one. This should be a tremendous basketball game. Not a tremendous DFS game, but a tremendous basketball game. Um, 216 and a half is the total, so it's low. 109 for Miami, Philadelphia, 107 and a half. This is going to be like an old fashioned NBA playoff game, uh, tight defense, uh, two teams going at it. Um, Jimmy Butler's the big question mark here. He is questionable, and uh, that is key to this entire rotation for, for uh, Miami and then how it affects defensively on the other side with Philly. Um, Cody Martin also, I'm sorry, Caleb Martin also questionable. Cody plays for Charlotte. Caleb is the twin for Miami. Oladipo and Vincent are out. No injuries listed for Philadelphia. So second night of a back-to-back, -back, no word on Embiid, in or out. We thought maybe he'd sit yesterday in preparation for this Miami game, but he played. That man is playing for the MVP. So do not mess around with them. <clears throat> that, you know, as we talked about, Deb and I talked about on the pod yesterday, Embiid is just going for it. There's only like a dozen games left in the regular season, and I think he wants to make this uh, MVP vote pretty uh, unanimous. So I expect him to be in there and be playing his minutes enough that need to, to be done to, to get the win. And it again, it's almost a pick -em type game. So you would think he's going to get uh, large minutes, but he is 11K and we're already trying to pay up for guys on this slate. So it's not an easy plug in just because Miami's defense and slow pace. Both of these teams play slow. So that doesn't get you excited to, to go uh, to a lot of guys here. Um, I, you know, as far as the heat side goes, if Butler plays really not interested in anybody because I don't want to pay up really Lowry's prices come up at least a little bit still too cheap though, but Lowry Butler Adebayo and hero are all pretty expensive. 
um, in a game that I do think is going to be a tough defensive battle. And then similar on the on the Philly side, you do have discounted prices on Maxi and Harris, 6'2 and 6'4. Very tempting. But your two key guys, Harden at 10K and Embiid at 11. So, you know, <clears throat> this is a game that I'm going to watch. We say this all the time. Some of you, the best games to watch are not the best games to play DFS-wise. And this may well be that, that game. Um, I am considering Embiid. I want to know for sure that he's full minutes and he's playing. No questionable tags. Um, he would be the target. And then if Butler sits, it's a game changer for me. Uh, it, you know, I would then look at a hero or a Lowry or somebody that's going to pick up that slack. But for the most part, I am not going to focus on this game uh, just because I think it's going to be slow and really strong defense. All right, <clears throat> let's go to the next one. Sorry about that. Just need the coffee this morning. I just have to have my coffee. Utah Jazz, Brooklyn Nets, 730 game, second night of a back-to-back -back for the Jazz, and they are banged up. Um, Brooklyn is, it's basic, it says Brooklyn favored by a half a point. So if you think the game's going to tie and you want that half a point, uh, it, it, it's not going to happen. But anyway, basically a pick them, 114 and a half implied for Utah, 115 for Brooklyn. Um, Conley is probable. He sat yesterday, so he's definitely going to play today. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Bogdanovich may play. Uh, he's questionable. He missed the last game as well. And it looks like they were gearing to get everybody back for this game that sat before because Azabuki, Forrest, and House, along with Bogdanovich and McConley, are all expected to play. So Utah is going to go from super shorthanded uh, to very possibly having like five guys back. So um, we'll watch that news, but it definitely, uh, you know, doesn't make it as wonderful to put some jazz people in there if they're going to be rotating a ton of guys. Brooklyn, we know there's three guys out. LMA, Kyrie, because it's a home game, and Simmons. He's who knows if he's ever going to come back. Um, couple things in this game. Again, Utah on a road trip on the East Coast, having to play in Brooklyn, not an easy thing to do. Donovan Mitchell smashed for us, like we said, uh, we felt he would. He's 9K, which is very fair. He's in play for me again. Uh, he's just a stud, man. He, it's that simple. But, you know, he does take a notch back. I love playing him when Connolly sits because he basically plays point guard and shooting guard and everything else. So, um, little step back with Connolly and some of these guys back. Bogdanovich gets up good 10, 15 shots a game. If he's back, that would also uh, take a little bit more away from Mitchell. So, Mitchell falling in, you know, that same category uh, with CJ McCollum. And uh, Darius Garland would probably be third choice for me in this one, but uh, certainly not a scratch off by any stretch. Uh, really not interested in anybody else from the Utah side in this one. Uh, on Brooklyn side, you know, you've got some cheap prices. The backcourt of Dragic at 5'3 and Curry at 5'6 are really starting to gel together, uh, and they're pretty cheap, so they're playable. KD, obviously, at 10-7, looks like a great play. He's going to be one of your key pay-up options. You know, he's in that same class for me, projection-wise, as Embiid. So KD, certainly uh, an option in this game. Drummond, if you want to go cheap at 5-7, but, you know, you've got Gobert on the other side. Definite foul trouble possibilities as Drummond's, you know, battling around in there with uh, the huge Gobert. So probably not going to take that risk in this game. All right, we go to uh, three 8 o'clock games, and then we have one 8.30 game. So the, the first 8 o'clock game is going to be interesting. It is Boston at Oklahoma City. Both played yesterday, so the second night of a back-to-back -back for both. Certainly the game on the slate that has the most propensity to blow out. So you got to consider that. It's uh, Boston by 13 and a half at Oklahoma City. 
216 and a half, very poor total. 115 for Boston, only 101 and a half for the Thunder. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if anybody else watched the Thunder and Magic game yesterday. That was painful. We said that we thought it would be a lousy game. Neither team wanted to win. It was worse than that. I think it was 90 to 86 as a final or 90 to 85. But those two teams have mailed it in. And it's hard to trust anybody. I'm, I'm telling you right now from those two teams, the Thunder or Magic, uh, the rest of this season. Yes, SGA will step up. But you know what? Uh, these two teams, it, they're in. Let's get to the end of this season quickly. We got about 11 games or so to go. And uh, don't count on big efforts by these teams down the stretch by any, any means possible. Um, all right, so Boston is, uh, you know, they, they had a decent game yesterday. It took them a while, but they, they got their business taken care of. They're pretty much healthy. Just Naismith is questionable, but the rest of their squad is good to go. Oklahoma City, again, SGA questionable. That's becoming a thing every day. Does he play? I mean, he sat yesterday. He could play today. Uh, maybe they saved him for Boston. He's the only legit, true, solid NBA player on this team right now. I mean, it's that bad. And then you've got Favors and Kenrich Williams questionable. So those guys have been out for a while, so we need to see. That will affect that rotation for sure uh, at the bigs. And then uh, we know Giddy and JRE are out. So again, you know, buyer beware in this game. I, I don't like this game. I'll just right out out of the shoot here huge spread Oklahoma City looking like you know what and uh, I just don't think Boston has to extend a lot of guys on the second night of a back-to-back I mean yeah you can spend up for Jalen Brown at 7-8 which is fair Tatum's 9-9 and then you know all the other pieces do they get enough minutes smart Horford Williams this is a chance to play the other Williams, Grant Williams, Derek White, Peyton Pritchard, Daniel Tice. I did see they were wanting to get him a few more minutes. No thanks. I'm just not touching anybody on that side. If SGA sits, you know, somebody's got to score something, and it's on Oklahoma City if he sits. And maybe it's Trey Mann. Uh, you know, Pokacheski did get it done for us yesterday, but you don't feel comfortable but he's only 5'2", man's only 5'4". Those would be the first two spots I would go to, but only if uh, SGA sits. And then let's see the bigs that play. <clears throat> Not that I'm going to go there, but, you know, they have do have some guys questionable. So good stay away game. I think most people will feel the same way, but sometimes the obvious, you just have to roll with it. Uh, all right. The next eight o'clock game is the Washington Wizards and Houston Rockets. Washington's favored by five. It's a 234 and a half total. So we have a very nice total here. It is tied for the highest total with that Pelicans Hornets game. Uh, and you do have two teams here that uh, don't play defense, period. Uh, so that's going to be good. Washington's a five point favorite in Houston, which is a little surprising. Uh, 119.75 implied for Washington, 114.75 for the Rockets. Um, coming into this game, Kyle Kuzma probable. So Washington's dialed up. They pretty much have everybody good to go. Eric Gordon, who missed the last game, very well could miss this one, although this is the second night of a back-to-back -back for Houston, island game for Washington. Gordon did sit yesterday, so he may – get in there and mess with that rotation a bit. Uh, my two favorite guys, Garuba and Wall, uh, are going to be out and have taken another four seconds of my life. All right, what do we think about this game? you got to have exposure here. Let's face it. I mean, you know, you've just, these two, it's perfect for DFS. These teams uh, really are out of it playing just to score the ball, you know, showcase. It's a game that works for DFS. A lot of possibilities here. Uh, you've got uh, really Kuzma at that 8K number. Number, Kristaps Porzingis at 7-7, fair. 
Seems like he's going to get enough minutes now. Uh, that loose cap is really just that loose. Um, you know, Hashimura at 3-9 got the start last time. Um, but, you know, we'll see his minutes have increased. Um, you know, you can even go as deep as a punt play like at Howell Neto at 3-8 uh, if you really want to go there. But really, Kispert at 4-2 is getting a little bit better with his play, but he spits, splits a little too much with Denny Advia at 4-4. Four, four. So really for me, it's more about Kuzma and Porzingis uh, and maybe Hachimura for a, a cheap play there. Houston, there's a lot of guys to like. Both uh, backcourt, KPJ at 6-4 and Jalen Green at 6, both have the potential to really throw a great game up on the board. Um, also, uh, Christian Wood at 8-2. He's, he has great games. He has flat games. You just got to catch him on the right game. This could be the right matchup, though. I think that uh, he can do very well against Chris Stapps at center. Um, he's going to score the ball from all over the floor. So Wood, even though he's a little pricey at 8 2, definitely has some potential here. We saw a little bit better from Zhen uh, Goon off the bench, but I think that's too inconsistent to really play here. The guard that you can consider, though, is Dennis Schroeder. He's only 5K, and he can light it up off the bench. And then uh, you're getting sort of a split now between Garrison Matthews and K.J. Martin, which makes them not very playable to me. So the key guys here, I think, are the ones I'm going to focus on. Certainly going to have some exposure to this game. All right. <clears throat> the last 8 o'clock game is the Toronto Raptors and the Chicago Bulls. Chicago's favored by four and a half. It's a 224 and a half total. We have Toronto on the second night of a back to back and on a road trip. So that makes things a little bit tougher there. Um, and then, as far as designations in this game, uh, we've got where are we at? There, uh, Fred Van Vliet, as always, he's now joined the uh, LeBron James club as being listed as questionable pretty much every day. Uh, you don't know if he's in or out, and he does play sometimes. So we do want to follow that news because it's important. And then two guys that are out for Toronto are Ananobi and Flynn. The only guy out now for Chicago is Lonzo Ball. They've gotten everybody back in and playing. So interesting game here. Nice total, 224.5 is fair, and only that 4.5 point spread. So if Van Vliet plays, he's now below 8K, so it's 7-9. Very tempting if he's not going to have any minutes restriction. Certainly Trent, we know at, at 6-4, can fill it up when he's hot. He's going to make a lot of shots. Barnes at 8-1 and Siakam at 8-9, a bit pricey. But, you know, guys, if you can fit them in, are, are solid enough. But, uh, you know, not plug and plays for me by any stretch. On the Chicago side, you know, you've got that same issue that we've we've been whining about all week. Levine at 7-6, DeRozan at 8-7, and Vuk at 7-8. At least the prices are more respectable. They were all over 8 and into the 9 territory here recently. So you can start picking and, and matching up. Uh, Vuk, Vuk is in a great spot here. I haven't played him a lot this year, but at 7-8, I think this – this could be a game that he really steps out. So he's one of my favorite uh, center plays at the moment uh, uh, as we speak. So I'd go there uh, more than, than the other spots. And then it, after that, though, those days of playing for me, Dasunmu Green um, are sort of gone because you've got Caruso, White, now Patrick Williams, who plays for the first time this year, Tonight, don't play him. He's going to be on a minutes restriction, but he does muddy the waters of that rotation. And <clears throat> Tristan Thompson's been getting a few minutes. So uh, not going to go deep with any of the Bulls, but I think it might be a Vuk night here for the coach. Last game, 8.30. So again, nine game schedule all start between 7 and 8.30. So pretty sweet. We're going to get them all condensed in there and over pretty early tonight. It is an interesting one. It's the Minnesota Timberwolves at the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs have to play the Timberwolves twice this week, and Minnesota's been on fire, so not too thrilled about that. But I think it's a really good DFS game. 
Dallas is favored by three and a half, which is a bit of a stretch the way the T Wolves have been playing. It is a nice, healthy 229 and a half total. 113 implied for Minnesota, 116 and a half for the Dallas Mavericks. Looks like Cat is listed as questionable right now, and that is massive with a capital M. Um, we'll, we need that news, period. I am definitely going to have either Cat in there or if he sits, Nas Reed. I want to attack the center position with Dallas like I've been doing, and I love Nas Reed too. So as silly as it sounds, I hope Cat sits because that's where I would go and I'd get a value. If not, and Cat's 100% go, then he would be probably my top center and bump Vuk out uh, for that spot. Um, Nas Reed is probable, by the way. Cat questionable. And then Jaden McDaniels <clears throat> is out. For Dallas, it's Hardaway and Pinson out, but they do get uh, Bullock back for this game, and they get Spencer Dinwiddie back. So should be a really fun game to watch, and I think you're going to get some decent scoring. We know Dallas plays slow, but Minnesota plays fast, so you're not going to get much more of a pace game for Dallas this year. Is Luka playable? Of course he is. You know, he bullies Patrick Beverly. He's a little too short to guard him, so I don't know how well they're going to get away with that. Um, they'll switch a few guys on him at, like they've done before. They'll even try guys like Vanderbilt on him. Just try to mix it up. But, uh, you know, what they also will do is blitz them. Um, you know, if you look at the statistic of which player gets blitzed with a double team more than any other player in the league, it's Luka Doncic. It's not Embiid. It's not Harden. It's not any of the guys. It's Luka. So, you know, does that, it does work sometimes to get the ball out of his hand and eliminate some of his uh, possessions. But, Dallas runs such a great high pick and roll with Dwight Powell, and they usually are able to bump Luka off the, the guy that uh, the other team wants guarding him. So Luka's certainly a great payup. I mean, he's that's going to be the decision for me that I have not made yet. Do I want to pay up uh, for Embiid, Durant, or Luka? Those are the three guys I think are in that upper echelon. Uh, I have them projected all you know very high. So that's the decision. Those are the three I'd focus on. Not sure I can get to two of the three unless a bunch of value opens up. And as of right now, there's no huge value. So it uh, looks like only one of those three because I still want to have uh, a strong enough squad around them. So that's what I am working on right now. Not going to look at uh, Brunson or Dinwiddie because when they're both in and in that rotation, I think they steal a little bit too much from each other. Um, and then Minnesota, again, if Cat or Reed in, I want to go big there. Wouldn't mind either a Russell or Edwards. It's just the only problem with Russell and Edwards is they're a little expensive. 7-7 seven, seven, and 7-4, seven, not bad, though. You know, more mid-range pricing. Uh, don't want both of them, but uh, one of those two, I think, would be a good play. So if I can do it, I'd love to go Luca and either Cat or Reed or and then either Russell or Edwards. So we'll see how that plays out. I'll definitely have some good exposure to that game, Minnesota-Dallas game, Washington-Houston game, and Pelicans and Hornets. Those three games will have probably three quarters of my team built. I think those are the three most targetable games on this slate, and uh, hopefully we can really nail some big ones today. <clears throat> a couple things. I want to thank the presenting sponsor. Um, it is betus.com.pa. If you are looking somewhere to bet on the Sweet 16, and if you figured out the Sweet 16, you are a genius because I think this is the worst I've ever done on my bracket. I only have eight of the 16. How is that possible? But it's true. Um, I'm sure a lot of other people are out there saying, yeah, me too. But uh, if you're looking to bet that sweet 16, betus.com.pa is fantastic. We have a special arrangement with them. It's almost too good to pass up. If you deposit with betus.com.pa with using the promo code Coach Talk, all one word, no space, and if you deposit at least $149, we will give you two free months of DFS Coach Talk. That's $150 value. 
that gets you all into these NBA playoffs, all the MLB baseball, all of our golf coverage, everything that we have going. I've been a, a member at BetUS.com for 16 years, believe it or not. And uh, they're great. Their payouts are great. It is an excellent spot to go. So BetUS.com.pa, use the promo code Coach Talk and get that two free months from a Coach Talk and you've got your membership set. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. Monday mornings are always a little bit hard getting going after busy weekends, but it's going to be a great week. We have lots of things going on here at Coach Talk. Enter our contest. Uh, go to Twitter uh, at, <clears throat> at DFS Coach Talk. We're giving away a free membership for the entire MLB season, which goes April 7th to October 2nd. You can see how to sign up for that. It is pinned uh, on our Twitter. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great Monday. Uh, keep an eye out later today for the Prize Picks podcast. That'll be a quick hitter with some of our top plays of the day there. And we're on some kind of heater in Prize Picks, man. It's I think we're I again <clears throat> somewhere in that sixteen and three number. So let's keep that going and build up that pot as well. So thank you for listening in. Have a great Monday, great week, and we'll see you again tomorrow. I'll be on with Deb Lutz. You don't want to miss that one. And we'll be looking to crush it in NBA DFS.